Yo, it's Death for the Cloud Chaser TV, man. Back up in this thing again, you dig? It's a special edition, a gangster edition. Larry Hoover, also known as King Larry, was born on November 30th, 1950, in Jackson, Mississippi. His parents moved the family north to Chicago, Illinois, when Hoover was four years old. But by the time he was 12 years old, Larry was on the streets with his friends, calling themselves the Supreme Gangsters. The group would often ditch school together and ride the L train around the city. Occasionally, they would engage in petty crimes, including stealing, mugging, and his criminal activity soon involved in shooting and assault. As the gang grew, Hoover emerged as a natural leader along with the rival gang leader, David Barksdale. Hoover decided to merge their gangs into one, the Gangster Disciple Nation, BGD, Black Gangster Disciple, in 1969. After Barksdale was killed in the shooting, Hoover took the Gangster Disciples, which now had control of Chicago's South Side. Under Hoover's rule, the Gangster Disciples took over the Southside drug trade, making more than $1,000 a day in profits. Located with convicted felon Larry Hoover this morning. Even though he's in prison, he is still viewed by police as the leader of the state's largest and most dangerous street gang. Joni Lum is here with the latest on today's raid. Joni? Sonia and Dave, authorities believe Larry Hoover is running an enormous gang operation from inside the Dixon Correctional Center where he is housed. Chicago, Illinois, and IRS agents carried out a federal warrant at the offices of Save the Children Promotions, looking for evidence of income tax evasion and money laundering. The 44-year-old acknowledged leader of the Black Gangster Disciples has been in prison since 1973 for a drug-related murder. At several parole hearings, he's claimed he's a changed man who is no longer violent. Today, police spent about two hours combing through the records of Save the Children on the South Side. They seized half a dozen cardboard boxes and file cabinets of financial records and also $7,000 in cash. Police say the charity organization has legitimate operations, but they also believe it is a front for an effort to get Hoover out of jail. Police believe that Hoover has been running drug trafficking in the city of Chicago from his jail cell and that potential tax law violations may be a way to dismantle the gang. Police also went to the home of Hoover's wife, Wendy Jenkins, where they also just took some records. And they haven't said yet exactly what they found in those records? or They, they found records with some amounts, but they did not find any drugs, and they haven't had any charges yet. By the age of 24, Hoover had been in and out of prison several times and had six separate shooting attempts on his life each time he survived and doubled his retaliation in his efforts by february 26 1973 hoover went too far he and another gangster disciple andrew howard shot and killed the dealer william young after a heated argument over money but hoover and howard were arrested and sentenced to 150 to 200 years in prison. Hoover was sent to Saintville Correctional Center in Crest Hill, Illinois to serve out his term, where Hoover's power seemed only to grow inside Stateville. He began protecting other inmates, who then became devoted and his new recruits for the Gangster Disciple Nation. The Hamburgers, you know, and some of the other Irish gangs that was coming up. And they were killing people. They was extorting people. They were doing all the things that they say blacks are doing now. And the thing is, is that they went on to become legitimate. That was supposed to have been a, a, an adolescent period that they went through. But they had people of the older group who molded them and guided them into City Hall, into industry, into the other departments of government, and now they are upstanding citizens within the society in which we live. Now Hoover, inspired by biography of Mayor Richard J. Daley, began disencouraging violence amongst his followers. Instead, he made education mandatory for members against the disciples. 
growth and development and instructed his army to go to school, learn trades and develop talents and skills so that they will become strong in society. Again, changing the GD from gangster disciple to growth for development. Hoover moved to reform, began gaining positive attention from the outside. Growth and development created nonprofit organizations that registered voters, a music label that helped needy children, a series of peaceful protests to fight the closing of public programs, even a clothing line for charity. So Hoover definitely had a lot going on. But again, these are the things that made me want to do this documentary on August 31st, 1995, after a five-year undercover investigation by the federal government, Hoover was indicted for drug conspiracy, extortion, and continuing to engage in criminal enterprise. He was arrested at the Vienna Correctional Center by the federal agents and moved to the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Chicago to stand trial. In 1997, who was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to six life sentences. Hoover is currently serving his sentence at the United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility in Florence, Colorado. Six consecutive life sentences in the most secure prison in the world, also known as a clean version of hell for basically an economic Which, crime. What prison is that? Name the prison. ADX uh, Supermax in Florence, Colorado. Colorado. They house uh, the Unabomber, Al-Qaeda operatives, mass killers, uh, Oklahoma City bomber, things of that nature. How what, old is he? How old? 68. 68 years old? Yeah, 68 years old. And really the reason why they imprisoned him is because he started doing positive for the community. He started showing that he actually had power, that he wasn't just one of a monolithic voice, but he could wrap people around. So there's theories that there's infinite amounts of universe and there's alternate universe. So it's very important for me to get Hoover out because in an alternate universe, I am. Every Sunday, people go to the church of their choice, every Saturday to the synagogue, every Friday to the mosque. And the preachers and the rabbis and the imams talk about the redemption of the human spirit. People can and do change. Mistakes can be learned from. I'm very honored to be a lawyer for a man named Larry Hoover. I'm not justifying things that the government said Mr. Hoover did. But I am here to tell you that Larry is not the same person that he was when he was on the street 40 years ago, 50 years ago. I am so tired of picking up the morning newspaper and reading stories about more young men shot, more young men shooting. It breaks my heart. And there has to be a way to put an end to violence in our communities. He's carefully thought about ways to end violence in our cities. And he's a man worth listening to. He knows what he's talking about. And we should open our ears and our hearts to Larry Hoover's plan to make the city of Chicago and other cities safe communities worthy of our support.